If you guys are lacking coins for all the new cards that are out, then check out MuleFactory.com. They're the cheapest site I've found for coins. They deliver in five minutes. And if you use TGC Kurt 5 at checkout, you get 5% off your order. Check them out with the link down below now. What's up guys, Curtis here and welcome to a brand new FIFA 10 to FIFA 17 transfer episode. Today and the next two days are going to be like a transfer bonanza. Now I'm sure there's going to be people commenting below saying, where's Lacazette or where's insert other transfer here? This week there's been a lot of transfers. There was about 50 that I've had to condense down into about 36 and we're going to do 10 to 12 an episode and we're going to do today, tomorrow and the day after. We're going to have three back-to-back -back days of transfers to try and catch up on all the tra crazy transfer dealings that have happened this week. It's been mad. This has been the biggest week for transfers. There's players that haven't even made it into this like I no lead signed a goalkeeper players like that Bradley Dak who normally would feature they haven't got a shot because there are so many big transfers this week so without any further ado don't comment down below if I've missed any because they will be in here soon but let's get into this episode with the first player okay so first up we have Fabio Barini who has just signed for AC Milan I don't really understand it how much did he go for it is on loan with an obligation to buy so they have to buy him they've done that with a few of their players to try and stay into financial fair play but of course he does have a bit of an interest in history before now anyway so obviously his latest card at the moment is at Sunderland but if we go back to FIFA 11 you'll see he had a Chelsea card he was actually at Chelsea from 2009 to 2011 he went on loan for half a season at Swansea I think that was in the championship let me double check it was in the championship uh, he was there with Brendan Rodgers quite interestingly. He scored six goals in nine games, which isn't too bad. That's probably what his level should be. He should have stayed at Sunderland, really. But uh, he moved to uh, Parma on a permanent deal. Never actually played for Parma. Was on loan at Roma. Scored nine in 24, which isn't bad. Then he was bought by Liverpool. Bit of just a weird setup here. Bought by Liverpool from Parma. Played 25 games for Liverpool. Only scored two goals. I'm sure a lot of them were off the bench. Then he was loaned to Sunderland and then bought permanently by Sunderland. He's played uh, 82 games and scored 14 goals for Sunderland over these few seasons. Quite a few years actually. I probably should have scrolled through that a bit quicker. But he's now somehow ended up at AC Milan. He's only got one first team cap for Italy. He's got eight, uh, sorry, 18 under 21 caps for Italy. So he's featured a fair bit. But not really uh, as high as you would have expected and very bizarre that AC Milan have signed him. They've actually got even more signings than you guys know as well. There's more literally just to, like today at me recording this. It isn't going to feature in the next couple. They've signed a right back. They just don't stop. Next up though, we have a very exciting right back. That is Rick Karsdorp. He has just signed for Roma, as you can see next to me right now. He's had a good season for Feyenoord. If we look, he has signed for Roma on a 14 million euro deal with performance related clauses, which could rise it to 19 million. Makes him the most expensive outgoing player in Feyenoord history, which surprises me. I feel like they've probably had some bigger outgoings than that, but obviously not. He's played 78 games for Feyenoord, three starts now for Netherlands. Uh, he's starting to become a bit of a big thing. 22 years of age. He's relatively young still. He's just signed for Roma. His history is as follows. He started off as a cam. Really exciting one, actually. Really bizarre. Good pace, good stats. Defending stats are pretty awful. Doesn't really make much sense for me. Don't really understand what how EA got that so wrong. But then he played at right back last season. A really, really good card to start off with. Then got a team of the season, which was even better. And then this season, a really sick gold. A really quality upgrade. And he's going to be at Roma next season. What I find bizarre about this is they've just agreed to sign Bruno Perez on a permanent after having him on loan. And they've also already got Florenzi as well. So I don't know if either of the, if Florenzi's going out or what. But three right backs to the club seems a little bit overkill unless they're going to go and play him in attack in mid. Obviously, they're not going to do that. Next up is Victor Fischer. The guy is a bit of an interesting one. I can't quite make my mind up on him. He uh, He's had an interesting bit of time. He's played 13 games for Borough this season, didn't score, but uh, he's just signed for FC Mainz, as you can see there. So, he signed for them on a four-year deal. I don't know if it was contract expiry or what. I can't see a fee, but if we go back, obviously, he was at Ajax. He was a left winger. He was an exciting young left winger. He's still only 23. He's, uh, he's, he's gone up through the ranks slowly. He had a 77 rated card last season, a 75 rated one this season. Uh, he obviously signed at the end of the year, 
Um, I don't really know what to make of it. He only played 13 league games, like I said. Maybe didn't suit the Premier League. It's a shame because that badge absolutely fits him perfectly. The Borough badge with the Denmark. It just looks right on the card, doesn't it? But he's signed for FC Mainz. I don't know how he's going to do. Is he going to be good in the Bundesliga? You'd hope so. It's going to be interesting to see how he gets on. Hopefully, he can get some nice informs and stuff like that. There's a few good Danish players on the game. So, uh, the more he can do, the better for the sake of the game. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's not really changed much throughout the years. He's basically stayed in that... That 3-4 rate in wheelhouse and stats haven't really changed. So it's going to be interesting what he's like next season. Number four is someone that's uh, usually quite a good player on FIFA. I actually quite enjoy using this card. Is Andre Hahn. So Hahn has just signed for Hamburg for £5 million. Pounds. I don't know what it would be in Euros. He's quite an interesting player. He's always been quite exciting on FIFA. Uh, he's always got a lot of pace. I don't know what he's going to be like next season. His stats weren't really the best for Borussia Mönchengladbach this season. 28 league appearances and only three goals. I don't know if he was playing out wide or in striker. But if we look through the years, he started off at Augsburg in uh, on FIFA anyway for FIFA 14. He had a right mid card. He ended up getting a team of the season that season. He then had a, a move to Borussia Mönchengladbach, which he's been there for three seasons now. He had his best season goals wise last year where he got 8 and 15 in the league which is this card which was his gold card of course that meant he got moved to a striker that was obviously where he'd been playing last year instead of out on the wing he's had he's got potential he's had good seasons he scored 12 in 32 for Augsburg from the wing so maybe he can utilize his time a little bit more fit in a little bit better at Hamburg maybe get a bit more game time 5 million I think that could be a bit of a steal he could go on to be something special still not reached his peak yet he's 26 two three more years if he hasn't hit his stride then okay fair enough but for 5 million million quid I think that's a good gamble and I think that could end up being a very very good deal indeed but next up we have Nathan Aki I'm sure you guys know what this deal is but if you don't let me tell you so Nathan Aki has just signed permanently for Bournemouth for a club record fee of 20 million quid. A very, very good signing in my humble opinion. He's of course grown up through Chelsea. Uh, he's been on at Chelsea since 2012, like for the first team. He was in the youth 2011, that was it. Doesn't didn't really feature that much. He's always been a player of uh, quite big potential as such on every video game, football manager, FIFA, everything like that. He's always a player with a lot of potential. And this season was the first year he kind of really showed it. He had a good season, season before last at Watford, but at Bournemouth, he really just looked incredible as part of their back three. Playing as a centre-back or a left-back, mainly as a centre-back, really. That's what he started off at. Um, he's been very, very impressive. He was, of course, recalled by Chelsea. But if we look through his seasons, FIFA 13 and 14, he just had a Chelsea card. FIFA 15, he was at Watford. He had a left-back card. He was playing left-back, centre-back. was mix mixing up each year. He went on loan to Bournemouth. Obviously, this was for the end of last season. He did also go on loan to uh, Reading in the middle of that. And then, of course, Chelsea really recalled him from his loan, only used him once or twice like right at the end of the season, didn't really need him and Bournemouth have done a good decision to call him back and buy him on a permanent for 20 million, he could be the difference for them next year, the first half of their season they were much much better having him in the side, a good passing, comfortable on the ball, really solid centre back and hopefully next season he actually might have a really sick centre back card if they start off the season playing him, hopefully he gets upgraded to a gold, you could be seeing one of those like absolute beast cards. 78 pay, something like that, cheap that a lot of people are using. Next up, we have someone with a really interesting bit of history. Now, I heard a little rumour about this guy, and I'm not exactly sure how true it is. So, Aaron Moy, I'm sure you guys know, was just owned by Man City. He's just been bought out permanently by Huddersfield for what at the time was a club record fee. They beat it, like, yesterday, I think, for this guy called Mune. Uh, 8 million initially, rising to 10 million. Now, I don't know how much this is true, but I heard that Man City acquired the Melbourne City side that he used to play for, for £7 million, and it's obviously turned, it's, it's basically now the Man City subsidiary again, they've got them in a few countries, haven't they? For £7 million, and that included Aaron Moy, I don't know if that's true, but if they have bought the club for £7 mil, got Aaron Moy and then sold him for £10 million, they've done pretty well there, two, three years, two years, they've made £3 million quick, and now they own a club. Now, this could be wrong. I, I did hear it. I actually heard it from my brother. So, whether or not it's true, I'm not sure. I'm sure people will tell me in the comments. But, he, uh, he has a bit of an interest in history. It's not actually in FIFA, but he used to play for St Mirren back in 2010, 2011. But he moved to Western Sydney Wanderers, where he was there for a couple of seasons. Actually, that is St Mirren, the first team. Never mind, St Mirren Football Club. 
in uh, FIFA 12. But he then moved to Western Sydney Wanderers where he had two cards. He was then bought by Melbourne City where he really did kind of shine. Seven goals in 27 in the first season in the league and then 11 in 26 in the second season. That was what led to him getting a team of the season card. And of course he was bought by Man City in that whole process during that window. Now... He obviously started that season off at Melbourne City, but they then loaned him to Huddersfield for this season in the Championship. He had another fantastic season in the Championship for Huddersfield. Played 45 of their 46 games. He's now going to be in the Premier League this season. A really exciting Australian player. 10 million quid, I think that's a good deal. If you know a player's that good, done so well for you. He's still relatively young. How old is he? I'm going to guess. He's 26. He's still got a few more years to reach the absolute height of his capabilities. He actually came up through Bolton's youth, which I think is quite interesting. But uh, really good, exciting international player. Hopefully he has a good card next year. Upgrade those stats a little bit and we might be in a good little situation. But if that's true about the uh, the price City paid, that is absolutely unbelievable. Now this next player needs absolutely no introduction. That is Seydou Dumbia. What a guy. He's been a FIFA beast for years upon years. He's still got a sick card now. Absolutely fantastic. And Seydou Dumbia has just signed for Sporting on loan. Now, it's his fourth consecutive loan since joining Roma. He's only played 13 games for Roma, despite going out on loan four times. Those loans, we will get to them shortly. This guy's had a bizarre career. We're going to go... He's, he's 29. We're going to go back to 2003, when he was 16 for his first club. He played for Atletic de Ajami. Then he went on loan to Tumodi. Then Asak Mimosas. Uh, A.S. Denguli. Kashiwa Raisol. Tukashima Vortis on loan. And then he went to Young boys and I think that is when he gets his first card it is at young boys in FIFA 10 following season he goes to CSK Moscow he goes there permanently he's actually owned there for five years it was a 15 million pound deal and considering he scored 61 goals in 95 appearances for them that's not bad two in every three is a ratio you can't shake a stick at he has all these seasons his FIFA 14 season I think must have been one of his best ones let me see if I can find his exact stats he scored 18 in tw uh, 18 in 22 that season so that's one of his best returns. He had a, uh, two seasons where he got 30 and 20 in the Swiss League. Very, very good indeed. But um, FIFA 15, he was bought by Roma. He played 13 games for them. And then uh, that was it in the entire season. Two goals. The following season, he went back on loan to CSK Moscow for half the season. Played 13 games. Then he went on loan to Newcastle instead. Obviously, we all remember when he was in the Prem. Three games, didn't score, barely featured, they went down. And then he went on loan to FC Basel this season. Scored 25 in 20. I mean, it's the Swiss League and it's Basel. But that's not a bad return. 25 in 20. That is not bad at all. But now, of course, he's gone to sport in a bit of a step up for the Swiss League going to the Portuguese League. It's obviously, going to the Portuguese Now League is the step up. But it's going to be interesting. Is he still got it? Can he still do it? Is he going to be good in Europe for sporting? I'd like to see him still have a lot of pace in his card. He is getting old a bit, though. Like I said, he is. I mean, he's only 29, but... You start to lose a bit of that pace. He's looking very, very old. I posted a pic on Twitter. If I remember, I'll include it around here. He's looking very, very old. So I don't know how he's going to do, but hopefully he has a good season in the Portuguese league. Next up, we have a player that I still can't decide what I think about him. That is Gerard De La Feu. Now, he's, of course, been on loan at AC Milan this season. He was at Everton. He's had a bit of a weird pass, but he's just re-signed for Barcelona. They activated the buyback clause for him. I'm not sure how much it was for. I wonder if I can see it really quickly. But it, in part of the deal, he they were able to buy him back. I can't see the fee. But uh, he's now got a, um, a two-year deal with Barcelona, to, to basically till 2019. That was part of the deal. When they sold him to Everton, they could buy him back, especially if he turns into a weldy. But of course, he started off at AC, uh, FC Barcelona, and he's at AC Milan then. Uh, he came up through the B side, played for the A side. He only ended up playing two games for the A side. So I'm assuming this was for the B team that he got this team of the season card. If we look at his uh, career stats, he got 18 goals in 33 for Barcelona that season, which is not bad obviously for the B side in that league that's not bad at all he only featured uh, once in the two seasons he was at Barcelona for the first side so not really much of much of a deal but obviously that season this season there obviously uh, Im impressed Everton now, he should actually have an Everton card for this one and a severe card for the next one. Like, it was because of the way the transfers worked. He was at Everton first, technically, on loan for the 13-14 season. Then he went on loan to Sevilla for the 14-15 season. Then for the 15-16 season, he returned to Everton. It's a bit all over the place. But he played 26 games in 15-16 and then 11 in the 16-17 season. But then they decided to loan him to AC Milan in January of this year. 17 games, 
Four goals for Macy Milan. Barcelona are obviously a little bit impressed by what he did. They've activated their buyback clause and he has gone back to AC Milan. Now, he is currently 23 years of age. He's still very young. Is he going to feature in that FC Barcelona squad? Where is he going to get into it? You can't picture it. You really can't. Unless they're going to loan him out now. That would make sense. They've bought him back and then loan him. Maybe. Seems a little bit bizarre. Don't really understand the uh, the idea behind it. But fair enough. He's back at Barcelona now. So uh, this one is kind of just had to be included. Because a lot of people were giving me some stick for it last time. I had mentioned that he's signed for Arsenal previously. Now what I'm going to say is sometimes I get these transfer videos wrong. I try and wait for full confidence. Information, but occasionally stuff happens like in this case Sky were reporting that he'd signed his agent came out and said he'd signed for Arsenal So I assumed it was a done deal. I was wrong to do so He actually ended up signing for Everton for seven million pound He's actually gone instantly out on loan to Anderlecht. So we'll include his Anderlecht card card instead Maybe I don't know. I don't know if I'll leave. I won't put a card there He signed for uh, uh, Everton no seven million quid sent immediately out on loan to Anderlecht Obviously, this is his only cards of the year. This one's kind of just a uh, clarifications and corrections one. And then last but most certainly not least, it's a player that in my opinion I, I consider to be quite similar to De La Feu. I think of them in the same sort of vein when I, when I think about either player. But they both started off at Barcelona. Christian Teo has just signed for Real Betis for a €4 million Euro deal. I think that's not bad at all given what he's done. If we look at his history, he started off at Barcelona. This was an unreal card. I remember it. Centre forward bronze with 87 pace. Playing in Spain, absolutely fantastic. He actually featured for Barcelona quite a bit. 59 first team appearances during his time. We won't go too far. 59 appearances, 11 goals. That was from 2011 to 2017. He featured in and out of different seasons. But he went on loan for a two-season loan to Porto. Played left wing and right wing. Featured in 36 games, scored seven goals. Then he went to Fiorentina for um, two... How long was that? But I mean... The stats I was looking at were wrong. It was just for one season. He only went at the end of last season. Um, FIFA... But he played 15 games, scored two goals, and of course, technically would have returned to Barcelona, but obviously he's now gone to Real Betis, so that's what that transfer is right there. But guys, that brings us to the end of this transfer episode. Smash the like button if you have enjoyed it. We will be doing these back to back to back the next few days, so I hope you have enjoyed this video. Smash the like button, subscribe if it's your first time watching. For some reason, my camera makes me look very white right now. I'm not this white. Have a fantastic day, guys, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys.